Maricopa County Supervisor. She helped lead the county from fiscal disaster to one of the best managed nations in the country. Best managed counties in the nation. In the Arizona legislature, she worked to make fiscal responsibility a hallmark, hallmark of Arizona's state budget. And it's no surprise that she had the fortitude to accomplish these things. She's always known that hard work is the way that you make things happen. She comes by it very naturally. After losing her father at the age of 11, she worked with her mother every day after school and on weekends at her mother's dress shop. She learned that you don't shy away from challenges, that you, you take them head on and you never quit. And on January 21st, 2009, Jan Brewer took this notion all the way to her inauguration when she was sworn in as the governor of the state of Arizona. And now, I would like to introduce you, and quit talking before Congress decides it can tax me for talking, introduce to you the governor of the great state of Arizona, Jan Brewer. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very, very much. And good morning. Good morning. Wow, this is like a safe port amidst a storm. You guys are fabulous. And thank you, Congressman, for that very kind uh, and warm uh, introduction. But before I begin, let me begin by saying that um, I know that Colorado was facing devastating wildfires up here, and I certainly uh, have seen too many of them uh, in the state of Arizona, and they leave uh, blackened forests and charred homes and heartache uh, behind. So as Colorado battles this awful uh, fire situation up here, I want you to know that I bring Arizona's thoughts and prayers to you, and I know We'll all, all of us, will be keeping the firefighters, including many from Arizona, uh, in our prayers as they risk their lives to save homes and protect Colorado's natural abundant beauty. Our nation is fortunate, we are all fortunate, to have the leadership of Senator Armstrong who is guiding Colorado Christian University as it helps Americans govern themselves better. That leadership, of course, includes the efforts of a great policy think tank like the Centennial Institute on campus, led by Director John Andrews in this annual Western Conservative Summit. Now, there is one other person who should be singled out for all that he has done to inspire and energize conservatives across this country. I'd ask him to stand and take a bow, but unfortunately, Barack Obama couldn't be with us this morning. I actually uh, offered to greet him at the airport yesterday when he arrived here in Arizona. But of course, the White House, they declined. I don't, I, you know, I don't really think he likes what I have to say. You know, you do know. You know a recession is when your neighbors lose their job. A depression is when you lose your job. And I believe a recovery for this nation will be back when Barack Obama loses his job. In my book, Scorpions for Breakfast, I tell him my meeting with the president in the Oval Office when I looked him in the eye and told him I didn't want to talk about so-called comprehensive immigration reform while our borders are still out of control. But his administration was telling us from 3,000 miles away that our border was more secure than ever. Well, Mr. President, tell that to the survivors and the friends of Robert Krentz, a dedicated community-minded man shot to death on the same Cochise County ranch his family has called home for more 
than 100 years. Tell that to the friends and relatives of brave and noble patrol agent, Agent Brian Terry, a victim of a border gang that was armed by our own federal government, allowing guns to be shipped into Mexico in the scandalous Fast and Furious operation. And by the way, now we're told that the Justice Department will shield Attorney General Eric Holder from prosecution after the House voted to hold him in contempt of Congress. Incredible, incredible. The President and his party had both houses in Congress for two years and could have secured our borders and fulfilled the promise to fix our broken immigration system. But they failed. They failed the American people regarding immigration policy, and they failed to protect our citizens, and they failed to preserve the rule of law, and they failed to secure our borders. Our brave men and women in uniform have been trained so that they are able to enforce this law efficiently, effectively, and in harmony with the Constitution. Civil rights will be protected. Racial profiling will not be tolerated. In fact, under my direction, Senate Bill 1070 was amended to strengthen and to emphasize the importance of civil rights and, and make sure that they are always protected. Arizona is prepared to move forward to enforce the law that we have fought so hard to defend, ever mindful of our rights, ever faithful to the Constitution. Now, you may have heard there is just a postscript to this story. Just hours following the Supreme Court decision, the Obama administration revoked an agreement which allowed Arizona law enforcement officers to partner with federal government in the enforcement of immigration law. Once again, they denied our state the resources it needs, yet they prevent us from protecting ourselves. You know, sometimes I wonder, in fact, this is a struggle with the federal government. It might just make us stronger, especially now, because we fully understand what Barack Obama has done to our country. In the November election, Americans will make a choice about what's right and about what's wrong. Wrong is the President Obama accumulating more debt than any other president in history. Wrong is the fact that millions of Americans are unemployed. Wrong is the fact that millions more cannot find work. Wrong is apologizing for America when he travels abroad. Wrong Wrong is failing to secure our borders and suing states that only want to enforce the law. Wrong is believing, thank you, thank you. Wrong is believing you can create wealth by simply spreading it around. And finally, wrong is claiming greatness by blaming others for his failures. Here's what I believe is right. Right is calling a terrorist, well, a terrorist. Right is calling a Christmas tree, a Christmas tree. And right is not being afraid to salute the flag, wear a flag pin, Say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Sing the national anthem, unashamed, with a tear in our eye. Right? Right is not being afraid to say to those who are here, who are here illegally, you deserve 
no favoritism. Uh, <laughs> obey our laws. No jobs over unemployed Americans. No driver's licenses. No special language privileges. And get in line the way thousands of others have done, the right way, the legal way. Right is saying that and doing much more, and that's what I've done. You know, what should bother us most is that we have a president who suggests that America is not an exceptional nation. What other country has sent its finest young men and women to fight on distant battlefields for justice and peace? What other nation ever rose to, to such strength, yet rose not to conquer, but to protect? What other nation has acted not to dominate, but to liberate? We are an exceptional nation, all right. That's just a fact, written in blood and sacrifice of American patriots and their family. Freedom, Ronald Reagan reminded us, is right, is the right to question and to change what we do things. Freedom is the continuing revolution of the marketplace. President Obama doesn't have much in common with Ronald Reagan, but the principal difference between the two men is fairly simple. One wants to spread the wealth. The other lived to spread freedom. In Arizona, I have chosen freedom. I decided to free the private sector from the burdens of overregulation and the heavy hand of government because I understood that the free enterprise system, not bigger government, was the answer. Just three years ago, Arizona literally was on the brink. We were struggling with a multi-billion dollar budget deficit, the worst in the nation. We needed a dramatic change in the philosophy of government, and Arizona is now living that philosophy. With a series of historic reforms, I lowered corporate taxes, lowered capital gain taxes, lowered corporate, corporate property taxes, and lowered business personal property taxes. I balanced the budget. I eliminated six state agencies and reduced personal, personnel costs by 13%. I also reformed the state's Medicaid system, saving over $500 million a year. In short, Thank you, thank you. In short, Arizona created a model for economic recovery very different from the Obama administration. Where they spent, we saved. Where they handcuffed private industry with excessive rules and regulation, we unleashed the free market. These reforms have been accomplished through basic Republican conservative free market principles of competition, choice, public-private partnership, and limited government regulations. And let me say right here and now, for defenders of freedom in the free market, Thursday's United States Supreme Court decision upholding Obamacare was overreaching and unaffordable and a huge assault on states' rights and individual liberty. Middle-class Americans are now faced with a massive new tax. The erosion of individual liberty and their health insurance choices dictated by an overbearing federal government. We need real, responsible health care reform. We need the inno thank you, yes. We need the innovation of states like Arizona that have enacted leading health care models, promoting private sector competition, consumer choice, quality coverage, and controlling costs. I believe true reform will spring from sovereign states, free to provide the coverage that best meets the needs of their citizens at a price they can afford. And I stand ready to work alongside Congress, state legislators, and stakeholders alike in developing 
sound proposals that enhance choice and competition and bring stability and predictability to our health care and our marketplace. The Supreme Court decision makes the November election more important than ever. It is now up to the American people to save our country from fiscal and regulatory nightmares. We must repeal Obamacare. And we must elect a president who understands the economy, represents free enterprise, and respects the Constitution and individual liberty. In just a few days, we'll celebrate the birth of the greatest nation the world has ever known. It should be a celebration that reminds us we can never give up fighting for what's right fighting for our freedom. Now, I understand that in his bid to win re-election, President Obama thinks Arizona, and probably your state too, is in play. He thinks he can win our states. Well, I say, game on. And I'm going to fight, and I'm going to travel our country. I'm going to speak with every ounce of energy uh, in me between now and November to return a Republican to the White House. So let's resolve to meet the challenges fa facing this great nation and conservatives. During the election of 1860, Abraham Lincoln wrote a letter to a friend and said, and I quote, I know there is a God and that he hates injustice. I see the storm coming. But if he has a place and a part for me, I believe that I am ready. End of quote. Well, we know there is a God and the storm is already here. And if he has a place and a part for me and all of you, I believe we are ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let there be no doubt these are difficult days that providence has set before us. I do not shrink from them, and neither should you. I do not cower, and neither should you. And after we get the right leadership in Washington, D.C., neither will America. Thank you. May God bless you and your families, and may God always bless and protect the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. God bless all of you. Thank you.